prior to us diving into pricing strategies and the demo. Does SEO make sense? Great, okay, perfect. So now um, we are gonna dive into some of the pricing strategies for these short-term rentals that you all have uh, and which one is best for you when you are utilizing this for your listing. So first for us to even understand like pricing strategies, right? We need to understand the difference between smart pricing versus dynamic pricing versus static pricing. And this is something that is um, actually pretty true for whether you're listening on Airbnb or even any other um, rental platform, right? That first, when we're looking at smart pricing, in that. Okay, that first when we're looking at smart pricing, smart pricing is the pricing that is controlled by Airbnb. So when we go through the demo, you all are actually going to see the place where Airbnb really encourages you to turn on smart pricing because the price is dynamic and it changes based on supply and demand and Airbnb can tell and they're automatically going to change your price. Um, so again, like I said, it's controlled by Airbnb. It changes based on market data that Airbnb has. And then it increases your bookings, but you have to understand that it does not necessarily maximize your earnings. Meaning that because this is a feature that is so encouraged by Airbnb, they want more people booking on their platform. They want more people actually staying on Airbnb. So it's gonna increase the amount of people who are actually booking your space. But again, it does not maximize earnings because that means Airbnb is choosing your price rather than you. So they're gonna make sure that you're keeping that occupancy up, but it's not going to maximize your earnings. Now, when we look at, I'm gonna to hop to static pricing first, and then we're gonna talk about dynamic pricing because it's kind of a merge between the two. But static pricing, is when you keep the exact same nightly rate um, for all at all times, meaning for weekdays or weekends, it's pretty hands off. So you set it saying, okay, my light, my nightly price is $120 for the weekdays and $157 on the weekends. And that's where you leave it. That is called static pricing, meaning it's not going to change. Um, based on supply and demand, it does not change. You don't care what events are going on in the city. It really doesn't matter. You are just having a consistent number or numeric um, like earning, monthly earnings that you're trying to hit. That is static pricing. Now, when we look at dynamic pricing, dynamic pricing, again, is kind of a merge between these two pricing, I guess, strategies. Um, dynamic pricing is controlled by you, meaning that, again, you are going to be choosing these prices for your nights and they are going to change based on the supply and demand, as well as your knowledge of the city. Meaning that if there is a specific, very, really large conference going on in the city, you're gonna knock those prices up like crazy for that weekend so that you can maximize those earnings. Because again, dynamic pricing works to maximize earnings because you're changing the price based on what is going on within that city and the supply and demand for what everyone has. Now we'll say that when we look at, for instance, the hospitality industry and hotels, which one of these strategies do hotels adopt? Anybody drop a comment? I'll say dynamic, no? Exactly. Air, these hotels are adopting the dynamic pricing strategy, meaning that it's going to change on from Saturday to Wednesday. It's not going to be the same price. If it's a weekend where there's a big concert going on, oh, you know that price is going up. If there's a conference going on, specifically maybe it's hosted at that hotel, oh, that price is going up. So again, understanding that we do want to adopt some of the strategies that these very large companies go for within our small short-term rental business, dynamic pricing is typically the pricing strategy that I recommend to folks. And it's also the pricing strategy that I myself use. So I do, it is a little bit more work, but I absolutely go into my listings and go into Airbnb and the platform um, every other day, if not every other couple of days and see, all right, what's going on? Do we have any bookings coming up? Okay, let me drop the prices for those days so that people can get in there. Is there a concert going on next month that I already know the date about? I'm gonna change those prices too. But dynamic pricing again, because my goal is to maximize earnings, that is what I choose. But for you, you really have to look at what works best for your business model. If you're someone who's wanting to be very hands-off, maybe it is gonna be a matter of you have static pricing, that you're just having that one set price every single day, every weekday, every weekend. Or you're somebody who you're saying, you know what, I'm willing to trust Airbnb and trust that they understand every single thing that's going on within this city and they have up-to-date market data and I'm just gonna let them choose my pricing, no matter what it is. 
Um, and with smart price, and I will say, and we're going to see it when we go into the demo, you are able to set a, a minimum and maximum that you don't want Airbnb to kind of go below or go above. You can absolutely do that. And that is one way that you may be able to help using that smart pricing strategy. But again, I do typically recommend the dynamic pricing strategy because thinking about what then feeds into our SEO, going in and changing pricing every couple of days anyway, is actually something that then helps you to show up better within those search results. Okay. So now I wanna dive into um, three different tactics that you are able to use with these pricing strategies for you to, again, figure out how, which one is the best one for you to use for your listing. So that first tactic that I want us to go over is actually lowering the horizon. This is what I call it. Um, this is when you go and you identify any gaps that you have within your calendar um, on the horizon. This is why it's called lower the horizon, meaning that these bookings that are coming up within like the next seven to 10 days, if you identify gaps, so this red box that I have here, this is a screen grab from some of my listings. Um, this red box I have here is around these dates where you can see I have bookings happening, you know, right now that happened over the weekend. And then within the next week, that next weekend, I have bookings, but I'm, I'm pretty much closed out or not closed out. I'm, I'm pretty open during the week. What do I do? How do I get people in there? How do I actually, again, maximize my occupancy rate? I'm going to drop those prices. Not crazy, crazy, but I'm going to drop them. I'm going to keep dropping them as it gets closer to that date so that now I'm not necessarily targeting those people who might be in my ideal target audience, but I'm targeting those folks who, yes, they are in my ideal target audience, but they're looking for a last minute booking. They're looking to get something pretty quick and they're looking to get in. And if I'm wanting someone to get in quickly, what's going to help with that at the very last minute is my price meaning that I need to be lower than other people so that I can get those folks in. So really, when you think about this, this tactic actually mirrors the strategy of Priceline. If you're familiar with Priceline, it's a website. Um, but Priceline is somewhere where you can go to get like, I believe, last minute bookings for flights, but also hotels as well. But Priceline uses a strategy of low margin, last minute bookings. So dropping your price 48 hours before may actually help you to attract those last minute travelers and work toward, again, what our primary goal, our number one goal when we first start as an Airbnb host, that 100% occupancy rate. So again, lowering the horizon, meaning any days that we see that we have upcoming that we still don't have booked, we're going to lower those prices at least to about 20 to 25% so that we can attract those last minute travelers and get them in and have that 100% occupancy rate. So tactic number two, um, prioritizing short stays. So this um, is pretty much understanding that if you are prioritizing shorter stays, meaning weekends, um, less than seven days, your nightly rate is going to be closer to the market average, meaning that your nightly rate is going to be closer to everybody else's rather than being above or lower than everyone else's. This strategy works well for people who are within hot locations like Las Vegas, Atlanta, um, New York City, number one, because people are traveling more frequently to those places. But then number two, there's so much demand, right? Like the demand is pretty high. And then even furthermore, the supply typically within these cities, Miami, Las Vegas, Atlanta, New York City, the supply is usually going to match, like that demand is going to match the supply, meaning that a ton of people are doing Airbnb. So what is going to make you stand out? Um, so when you are looking to prioritize shorter stays, you need to make sure that that nightly rate is actually closer to what the market average is. And I'll show you within the Airbnb platform as well, where they show you how do you find your average nightly rate for those listings that are similar to yours? Um, Airbnb does give us a ton of analytics to look through. And when you look through those analytics, those are gonna be your answers of why am I not getting crazy bookings? Why am I not maximizing earnings? Why have I listed my space, but I've only received two bookings since I've listed? That is where your answers are gonna be within those numbers. Um, so your target market is only seeking a place to stay for a few nights. This is when you want to prioritize those shorter stays. So for those of you, we have already talked about your target market. Um, think about whether or not they are looking to stay for a short term or they're looking to stay for the long term. As I've already mentioned, hot travel locations, typically they're going to be those short term guests who are coming for a weekend. They're touring the city and they're just coming to visit. 
Okay. And tactic number three is actually prioritizing monthly or longer stays. So when you do this, your nightly rate, meaning that your rate for one night is going to be above market average. Why do we do this? This is going to discourage people from booking that short stay, meaning that you might have a long stay discount in place, but for just one night, someone is going to pay $300. But if they book three nights, they're going to get a 25% 25% discount that's going to bring them to about $450 for those three days, rather than $900 of what would be there. Does that piece make sense? Okay, I want to make sure that makes sense. But yes, this is why you make sure that that nightly rate is above market average. And when we're going for those shorter stays, it's closer to market average. So people can book on a night by night basis. But if we do not want people booking on a night by night basis, or like, one night here, two nights there, that is when we're going to make the nightly rate cra like crazy increased so that they do not book and they are actually looking or we're more attractive, our listing is more attractive for those people who are searching for stays that are longer than 10 days, 15 days, 20 days. Um, so again, this strategy works really well um, during those slow travel months because less people are traveling and that then in turn is showing that more people are looking to stay for the, those longer stays, especially around the holidays. So this increases the views um, since your calendar will be appearing open longer. So your calendar is going to show us open because you're going to have less people who are booking up days like smack dab a Saturday in the middle of the month. So you're going to show up for those people who are searching exact dates. And then rather than actually activating a minimum stay setting, meaning that you're saying, okay, well, people have to go in here and they have to stay at least three or four nights or I will not be accepting their booking. Rather than doing that, we actually just increase the price to make a one night stay undesirable. Meaning that if I see, if I go on your list and it's like, whoa, to stay one night is $400, that's crazy. But if I say three, I now get this crazy discount that's gonna encourage me to then book your space for a longer stay or just not look at your space for that one night stay. And then it's also increases your net earnings since again, during that month using this tactic, you actually have less toner, turnover, meaning that you have less expenses, less people coming in and out so you don't have to pay your cleaners as much. Um, and then at that point, you are able to pocket more of your earnings that you make during that month rather than using it for your expenses and your upkeep, your operating expenses. Okay, so now when we're looking at determining our price, again, after this, we're going to dive within the, uh, we're going to dive into the Airbnb platform. When we're looking at determining your price, there's kind of two ways that you can use to determine what your price should be for your listing. So that first way is actually starting with your total monthly expenses. Um, so some of you, we may have talked about this already, but you want to go ahead and identify your base rate meaning that the lowest rate that you are able to charge. This is how we are able to, again, just go about starting with our total monthly expenses. So what you wanna do is add together all of your monthly expenses, meaning that what is the rent, what's your estimate on utilities, um, toiletries and snacks, how much are you gonna be spending? How much are you spending on cleanings? Um, and how many stays do you estimate per month? Just so that you can get an estimate on how much that cleaning is gonna be per month. So let's say just for example, excuse me, we have a rent that's $1,300. And at this point, this is kind of outdated because as we know, rent prices are crazy right now. So $1,300 is a real steal if you do find it. But let's say we have a rent of $1,300. We're estimating that utilities, meaning that water, maybe gas and electric are gonna be right about $200 per month. Um, we got some toiletries and snacks, meaning what I'm spending on maybe coffee, what I'm spending on toilet paper and paper towel in the month is gonna equate to about a hundred bucks. And then cleaning, um, I pay $80 for each cleaning and I'm estimating about six stays within the month. So that's gonna to equal to $480, right about 500 bucks. So we see our total is 2,080 bucks for our total monthly expenses of what we're estimating. If we divide that by 21 days, because this is estimating that we're at a 70% booking rate, 30 days, 21 days divided by 30, that's about 70%. Um, because again, we do not want to try to project that we're gonna be 100% booked immediately. There's typically a buildup when you're starting with your first listing. So if we're looking at that and we're saying, okay, these are my total expenses per month. And really my main goal is to say, I just wanna cover my expenses. 
this is for someone, this works really well for someone who's saying, it's my space I'm listing. I'm pretty much just trying to live for free. I'm not necessarily worried about making money right now. For most of you, you don't actually subscribe to that piece. But for those of you who might, <laughs> This is that, that, this is that um, strategy that you're able to use for pricing your unit. So again, we divide that by 21 days, which assumes a 70% occupancy. And we're getting at the base, $99 minimum is what we need to be charging per day in order to cover our expenses. So this is what we say when we say you get into a unit and you wanna make sure that at the very least, everybody should actually do this activity because at the very least, you wanna make sure that each month, you are covering your monthly expenses. So this is gonna be that minimum that you're saying, I cannot drop below or else I'm gonna to have to come out of pocket and pay for my unit. So with this one in this particular example, that, that minimum is $99. Now, the other way that we are able to do this on the flip side is actually starting with your gross earnings goal, meaning how much do I wanna make per month? So again, just for example, let's say that your goal is to make $4,000 per month. That's gross, right? That's not necessarily net, that's gross. So what you wanna do is with that goal that you have of that $4,000 per month, we're now dividing that by 21 days because again, this is assuming a 70% occupancy. So at that point, we are getting a nightly rate of $190. Do you see the, the gap between what that base was of if our goal was to just cover monthly expenses Versus if we're looking at, okay, I actually want to make some real money with this and maximize my earnings, that nightly rate is now $190. The only thing that you need to remember when going this route um, and using this strategy is that the cleaning fee is charged per stay. Um, and this is what many people typically forget uh, within their pricing strategies. The cleaning fee is not charged nightly, meaning every single night, if you got a three night booking, they're going to be getting charged $80 times three. It's once per stay. So again, it is not charged per night. Um, what is a reasonable gross monthly when starting out? For that, well, it's gonna depend on your, um, your location, but $4,000 is a modest like goal to have with Airbnb because it's absolutely attainable. Again, if you are actually pricing your unit the way you should be pricing it. Many people, I always tell people to start when you're thinking about pricing, think about what your goal is. Is your goal to um, just make sure that you're covering the, covering the rent? Is your goal just to say, okay, I want to make some extra bucks during the month? Or is your goal to say, all right, this is a business. This is an actual business and I'm looking to maximize those earnings. At that point, when it's an actual business, then yeah, $4,000 is a modest goal um, that you can absolutely attain. Okay. Now, um, just with thinking about pricing, it's very easy to think that, um, okay, I'm just going to lower my prices and I'm going to be the lowest on, you know, the, on Airbnb, listed on Airbnb, listed within my neighborhood, because then I'm going to take everybody else's booking. And then everybody's going to come to me and I'm going to be maximizing my earnings. No, um, it, it does not work like that. Understand that when you are the lowest on the market, meaning that you are the lowest option that people are seeing on Airbnb, on VRBO, on HomeAway, on any of these sites, it is going to attract undesirable guests because you're the lowest, right? They, they're looking for a cheap option. You're going to attract party throwers. You're going to attract guests that are cheap and they may go into the unit and they're looking for things wrong because the little money that they did pay you, they want it back. <laughs> they want a refund. So understand that when you are actually the lowest on the market, you are going to attract undesirable guests. Um, it is going to increase the actual turnover uh, because it's increasing your expenses due to the cleanings and supplies. When you're the lowest on the market, of course, you're going to get more bookings. But of course, in that same breath, you are actually increasing those expenses that you now have during that month as well. Um, and then the guests are actually going to credit, are actually going to question, excuse me, your rate, leaving you no room for discounts. So they're gonna question like, okay, number one, is this real? Or number one, they're gonna question the quality of your unit. Why is it so cheap? There has to be something wrong. That is typically where our minds go. So this is why you wanna avoid just being the lowest on the market. Now, um, we're not gonna talk next steps just yet. We're actually about to, I'm gonna stop this chair and then 